All right, so this will be an introduction video for a series of videos I'm going to do on user forms. So I did do one short video on user forms and I had a lot of questions. So this will be level two for a user form. So we'll address a lot of those questions, not all of them. I'll probably do level three to get into some other topics in here. So here I have the place where all the information is gonna come in. So if I go to my forms and click show user form, it will show our user form with the loading as a sidebar. See, when it loads, it shows up. We're gonna have this drop down options tab. And this is data that's being used for this drop downs here. And it's a dependent drop down, like cascading. So what that means, if I go here and choose veggies, see, I get a list only for veggies in this list. For example, pick onions. It's only gonna give me the type of onions that are available. So in this case, there's one type. Now that's all working according to this list that's over here. So if I go here and look here, you can see under veggies, potatoes, we should have three types. So if I go here and change this to potatoes, we should get those three types for potatoes. So we could just come in here and add more types to these dropdowns as we see fit. So now with these changes, if I just go here and reload this user form, I should be able now to see there is this, see other option. And if I open this, we have soap and water. And if I have this under soap, I'm gonna get the option six pack, one bar. And then I also have water, which gives me that 12 ounce, which is the option. So we have this dependent drop down on top. And in this form, we also have this quantity on hand that displays on the left for this combination. And that's all coming from this inventory worksheet. So right now, if you look here in stock for veggies, onions, one type, it says 134. So if I go here and pick that combination, you'll see how this refreshes and it updates with the current quantity on hand. That's basically a combination of formulas that we're using to take the total quantity received minus whatever quantity was shipped out. So what that means now, if I go for this combination to my results, this is where the data actually is being added. And I add, let's say another 20 and just pick some date that this was received at. You know, there are some other fields we can fill out that I'm gonna talk about in just a second. If I click add to database right now, see that adds the line to the database and now on hand quantity automatically is updated based on this new entry. So all of these forms have also validation in them. So if I don't fill up all the required forms and I click add to database, see we get error messages that says like, you have to enter this, you have to enter that. These forms also have this check boxes. So see, we can check those boxes. It also has a conditional field. So if I click on this second checkbox, see it adds this new inputs for us to enter information. And this has multiple options we can add to it. So we can hit pluses. It adds more boxes where we can input more of this data or we can do minus to remove some of these. So to build all of this, we're gonna be using Google Sheets. We'll be using Bootstrap as our front end system. So bootstrap, you can get to it by going to getbootstrap.com. This will be mainly what we'll be using as a front end system. And I chose bootstrap because I did a quick survey and vast majority of responses asked to use bootstrap for this. So that's what I picked. So there are gonna be a couple of other things here and there I'll be using to, for example, include this check boxes. We'll be using some add-ons or we'll be using some of this icon add-ons to add this icons for pluses and minuses. But vast majority of this is gonna be built using stock bootstrap, Google Sheets, and app scripts. And if you want to see how to build something like this, 
the next parts are coming up right after I upload this video. So please subscribe and I'll see you soon.